Hey everyone. Let me put my do not disturb on. I always forget to do that. And then my phone goes crazy. Okay, let's see. Let's get Jody in here. Huh. Mm. Okay, hold on guys, I'm trying to get Jody in. One sec. Mm. I think that she actually has to go on first so we'll give her a minute hey everyone thank you so much for joining all right let's see hi wow australia oh my god what time is it there <laughs> okay let's see oops what did i push all right let's see all right jody why can't i find you What is going on? Huh. I don't know why I can't find Jody in here. I'll find her. Don't worry. <laughs> Let's see. Shay, did I see you sign in? Here you are, Jody. Hold on one second. Okay, guys, Jody's coming in now. Hey, beautiful. Oh my God, Carla, it's so good to see you. So good to see you, Mama. Sorry, I was having like a little bit of difficulty, technical difficulty trying to bring you in, but <laughs> yay, that here we are. To me, that happened to me the other night. And actually, I just want to say the last time I saw you had your hair in a towel, so you look stunning. Oh, well, thank you. I did have <laughs> my hair in a towel. I did not want to miss the opportunity to tell everybody how fabulous you are. And I have been avoiding all of my electronics because on top of having whatever cold this is, it gave me the worst migraine for about three and a half, almost four days. I couldn't even look at oh. my cell phone. It was just dark room with the pads over my eyes kind of a day. And uh, Amelia was like, Carla, if you don't get on Instagram soon, like, I'm going to have to do it. I'm like, no, no, hold on. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm going. I'm doing it in a, with a towel on my head. I'm doing yeah. it. <laughs> I love it. So for those of you guys who are just joining, um, I want to just say welcome to Jody. Um, Jody and I have met through a mutual friend of ours, Shay, and um, I am just so grateful and so honored that she could spend some time with us this evening talking about her incredible talent and forte. And um, yeah, so uh, for those of you guys who don't already follow Jody, please take the time and do that. Um, you're going to be blown away by the content and the material. And we'll tell you guys later all about how you guys can learn from Jody and everything like that. But I am so looking forward to hearing more about you. I, I mean, you and I have talked many times, but I don't think we ever really got to know each other either. So this is really exciting, even for me. Aww. So um, why don't we start with who you are? Why don't you introduce yourself and, you know, tell, you know, kind of who you are and you know, <laughs> share it all. Absolutely. Exactly. Okay. So my name is Jody Stosky. 
I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Sorry, and Moose, off. <laughs> he never barks, literally ever. Moose. Hey, what are you barking at? No, stop. Oh my God, I love it. God, he never does that. Now he wants to do it today. Sorry about that. That's okay. The beauty of life. Um, okay, so I'll start over because I'm like, yes, please. I digress. Sorry. Okay. Um, so my name Jody Stosky. I live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I have a business called Cinnamon Girl Clinic, and I do paramedical tattooing and cosmetic tattooing. We have about five girls that work there. And then I also have an online tattoo academy which teaches all things paramedical. And that is something that I'm so passionate about. I know we're, got, we're gonna get into talking about that, but yep. I get a lot of questions about my story and how I got here today. So I'm definitely excited to share that. And I can't um, wait to hear it. I'm like chomping at the bit. <laughs> and, and of course, answer any questions that you guys might have. So I think the big one, first of all, is can we just explain what paramedical tattooing is? I, I think that that word just throws people because we, it is kind of under the umbrella of permanent makeup. Um, yeah. But permanent makeup is more to almost enhance someone's natural beauty where paramedical tattooing is yes it does that but it's a little bit different too so maybe we want to start with just like telling people what paramedical tattooing even is for those okay, of us let's do it i kind of forget that it's a term that sometimes throws people off because it's so much a part of my world and my daily so paramedical tattooing is a style of tattooing that does umbrella under what we do as PMUs, but it's an industry that's in its infancy. It is a style of tattooing that's meant to recreate features in a 3D manner that have been lost from illness or maybe injury. So to elaborate on that, like you've had a mastectomy from cancer and you don't have areolas. Um, we put those areolas back on to look hyper realistic so that nobody knows they were gone in the first place. Or you've been in a car accident and you had massive facial reconstruction and you are self-conscious about the scarring that's on your face. And we can go in and camouflage and make things look um, natural and back to normal. Um, women who have had facelifts, they are, I see a lot of these, you know, they've had a beautiful facelift. But and they get the scarring here. Exactly. So then what ends up happening is it transitions from like, oh my God, I, I love my face. I love this surgery to I'm self-conscious about pulling my hair back because you can see these scars or I don't want to be on the soccer field when my son's playing soccer because if the wind blows back, I feel like everybody notices those scars. Right, we get so, those with like BBLs as well, um, yeah. even breast augmentation. Um, there's lots of plastic surgery out there, different types. And I mean, you are surgically intervening, so you're going to end up with scars and to which you would step in and deal with the camouflaging of those scars. Um, and the the racing of almost like the entry points, I guess yeah. is a good way to kind of put that, right? One of the things that I feel like I say all the time is paramedical tattoos heal. And the reason they do that is because they're closing a chapter on something that's typically traumatic for them, like, like cancer or um, an accident of some type or an illness. And those are tattoos that if you're if you're a PMU, you don't really get to experience, but it's a completely different level of gratitude and a completely different part of the business that is in its infancy. People are just starting to hear that word paramedical and get that this is a whole nother part of a business that you can add to your existing business. So yeah, it's they're starting to get cool. excited about it too. You know, yeah. I mean, really are starting to see quite a bit of it. I mean, I almost deal with it with when I work with dark look neutralization because it, I almost, I tell people a lot that it's kind of almost paramedical. Now, granted it wasn't caused by, um, you know, perhaps injury or, you know, something traumatic that happened in life, but you really are shifting something. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're, you're using camouflage, which is essentially yeah. 
what you guys do from a paramedical standpoint, where I think like where people see things like under eye circles and stuff like that, um, it kind of straddles the paramedical permanent makeup industry because it's not always trauma oriented, but it does use the camouflaging techniques in order to create that hyper realistic look, I guess yeah. is the... You get it. You get it, girl. I get it. I get it. Guys, I get it. <laughs> That's awesome. So so for those of you guys, just to recap, so paramedical tattooing is basically the medical side of what, what we do, essentially. So you are treating with tattooing um, either injury sites or you're replacing something that has been lost, et cetera, but it is all done still by tattooing whether exactly. you're and you are using pigment in yeah so 90 PMUs of have these skills right. you know it's it's something that's already almost completely in their arsenal they need that extra bit of training to add that to their business and I love to share that this is not a hard thing to add on and it is desperately needed. So yeah, I'm excited to talk about it. Oh, that's fantastic. So now that we're here and we're there, how long have you been in um, the paramedical tattoo industry? And where did you start? I, I mean, did we start immediately in with areolas and scar camouflage and things like that? Okay, well, let me break it down. I was a makeup artist to start. So I worked in film, print, television, and then I did wedding makeups on the weekend. And it was actually where I made most of my money, but it was literally every weekend. And um, let me tell you that a high maintenance brow client has absolutely nothing on a bridezilla. <laughs> like, no, no, for sure. So I did my PMU training with a couple different trainers, which at the time was hard to hard. find. I had I to know. travel. You and I started around the same time. Very it hard. It was. So they were actually coincidentally both physicians and it exposed me to paramedical tattooing right from the start. And at the time I didn't know that, but I, it was going to help me so much in the long run of what I started to do and, and how my business started to grow and develop. So I worked out of two locations. So I was renting rooms, one at a spa. And then the second one was at like a cancer based, like a focused um, retail store. So I was seeing paramedical tattooing right from the beginning and weekly, which was pretty unique. Um, and what happened was in 2013, I get thrown this really crappy curveball. So after multiple scans on my neck, I get diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Oh, baby. And yeah, so they say, you know, you have to have a complete thyroidectomy. And it leaves me with this nasty scar on my neck. And it leaves me with ongoing depression, anxiety, because you have these fluctuating thyroid hormones. And it's still a challenge to this day. Like, I think they talk about thyroid cancer. It's not by any stretch one of it's not pancreatic cancer. Let me no, say of that. course, right? I know. What but you're getting it, at. it has its challenges for sure. And um, yeah, I mean, cancer for anybody is no joke. There's usually those ongoing things that happen and those just happen to be the things that I still deal with. Um, so then like, okay, I'm doing PFU and paramedical for like four to five years now. And I start understanding why my clients are so super emotional about their results. Um, because I now have this scar across my neck. And when I'm talking to people, like I see them staring at my neck. <laughs> and and I'm, I get super self-conscious about that. And you have I a mean, very lovely neck. I well, never even noticed. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I mean, I did try and own that scar. But there was something that I still had, I was insecure about it. And it just, it felt horrible. It felt horrible when people were staring at my throat instead of my face. And I started understanding 
what my other clients were feeling when they were coming into me. So the scar finally heals and I decide, okay, well, I'm going to use this paramedical expertise that I have and work it on my own scar. And I camouflage this scar so that nobody can see it. And then in turn, no one's staring at my neck anymore while I'm talking to them. So moving onward, um, I start outgrowing this whole sub lease thing that I have going on at these right. two locations. And I decide to take the plunge of signing my own lease, creating and building out my own space, which is super stressful. Yes, it is. <laughs> So I know you get it. And I know that there's a lot of PMUs that get it as well. And they get this stress that I'm talking about. You know, it's, it's sort of unlike anything you can compare it to, especially when you're renting and you have this cushion, like it's different, right? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. When so, it becomes your, your baby and you have to like eat, sleep and breathe it. It's, it's intense. It's like, it's seriously, it's akin to raising a child. It really is. <laughs> it is. And I mean, if you have any type of anxiety, which like, hello, CEO of that, <laughs> you know, it's stuff that keeps you up at night. You're like, okay, how am I going to pay my rent if I'm not this busy with this amount of clients? So I decide that I'm going to just kick my marketing up into high gear. So like I'm already busy with my PMU stuff, but the paramedical aspect of things, it just starts setting me apart from the existing competition. And so a lot of the marketing that I had done before I got sick was starting to pay off. So I get all kinds of different media exposure. I get invited to be on all the different local networks of television in my city. And I get featured in print across the country. And now I'm starting to talk at my hospitals in my city and educate the surgical staff about paramedical tattooing and how it restores confidence in their patients. So and the coolest thing about that is I'm the living proof. They're right. like, I was just going to say, and you're literally your own walking billboard, which is amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, they were so interested. I mean, I had these people's captivated attention the whole time I was talking <laughs> and um, like so passionate about it. And what was amazing about that was the instant credibility that that gives you when you start exposing yourself to that market is it's unique and it doesn't I don't know that that happens with regular PMU I mean I don't think is not and you know we had Shira on a couple of maybe a month and a half ago and she basically said almost like the same kind of a thing where you know they're not they don't the medical industry doesn't really understand what we do so much as permanent makeup artist, but when yeah. we start to talk about how it transcends and can help their end of that medical community, like they, they light up and yeah. they're much more receptive to hearing how the same techniques and tools can be used to transform someone's confidence in a completely different way. Well, and jumping back even to, you know, when we were, you were saying like, you know, define paramedical tattooing, you know, it's, when you're bringing that onto the forefront, I mean, you're not only educating your potential clients, but you're educating m medical staff, like doctors and nurses, and everybody is so receptive to that. There's no, no one's glazing over, like you're talking about eyebrows and you're like, yeah, there's an eyebrow shop on every corner of every street in my right. city. You know what I mean? Totally. Um, and, you know, it probably helps them too, as far as I hate to say the sale of the plastic surgery, but at the end of the day, I mean, there's some sale there too. There's, you know, some women, you know, maybe would love to have, you know, breast augmentation or a tummy tuck or a BBL, but they're, or a facelift, but they're afraid of the scarring or, yeah. you know, there's, um, there's a guy in Miami who does it. And I don't know if I can remember his name off the top of my head, but he's basically goes inside the nose now and cuts this, this section right here. And instead of using lip injections and fillers to create that fuller lip, they shorten yeah. the philanthrom and lift it. But it can leave a, a scar right yeah. here underneath the nose, which is really frontal and on your face, whereas something like this could come in and, you know, really repair that for somebody who's willing to, to take those kinds of steps, yeah. knowing that they can also deal with some of that scarring on the back end. Um, 
is, is it's relieving. It really is. I have some nasty scars from breast augmentation um, and the birth of my, my daughter. I have some crazy scarring on my abdomen and um, I had it worked on um, paramedically as well um, for the scar camouflage and things like that. And it's a thousand times better than it ever was. But it was, it was a huge little kind of awkward thing, you know, to have all this kind of fixed so that way I could like function abdominally properly and yeah. not have these like huge hernias that were sticking out all the time. But I, it was a trade off that and this scar looks like I was in a magic show. Looks yeah. like I was sawed in half. That's why I, I mean, felt about I have my a neck. Brand new belly button, but it's it it's ugly. It yeah. doesn't look like a belly button. It doesn't have the right color, the right tone. It's got scarring yeah. everywhere, and you know it's it's kind of it's not really all that attractive in a bathing suit. I'm not gonna just I'm just gonna throw it out there. It looks yeah. weird, and it's real. I'm really self conscious about it. And so I, I think the other thing too, it's like if you have stretch marks, you may totally own them and rock them. And that's great. Totally. Or you have a tummy tuck scar and you're like, yeah, like I have no problems with this. That is perfectly acceptable. But for the people who do like you, Carla, you're like, yeah, I <laughs> felt self-conscious about it or me with my neck. Um, those are the people who we want to help. And I will say that we are the majority. Um, I think yeah. as amazing as it is to be confident, you know, rocking these different types of things, most of us tend to lean to the other end of the spectrum and be like, I'd like that to potentially go away or be improved or whatever that yeah. looks like. I know? mean, when, when I signed up to have the work done, I mean, I, you know, I was forewarned. I have melanin rich skin. Yeah. I, I scar very darkly. I have one on my arm that's been here since I was 13. But, um, you know, the one on the back doesn't really bug me too much. But this one's, I mean, you notice it. And, yeah. um, you know, I was told, listen, you know, if that's what happens to you here, it's going to happen all, all, everywhere else. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm in a lot of discomfort and pain. So I, I guess I'll take the scars. And back then when I had the surgery, this really didn't exist either. Yeah. And it, it was like really in its infancy and people were very nervous about using skin and flesh tone pigments, totally. uh, how to use them correctly. You know, uh, you know, I go out in the sun and I get four shades darker just from being in the shade. So I'm there was the a lot of like, con <coughs> excuse me, controversy, <coughs> but I can't tell you how much better it looks then and I'll send you pictures and you can take a look because it needs more it needs more help and when I come up to visit you guys um, I'm coming to the studio and you can fix me up <laughs> I'm but, on it and also like arm stuff I'm so all over that Carla I want to somebody tried this one yeah and it's it's very raised this one okay. is not and it's against okay. metal inside okay. my skin so you can like if I run my hand across like you can feel like the bumps and the lumps from the pins yeah. and the screws yeah but <laughs> I don't know if I get it any closer yeah it, it doesn't it didn't really it really didn't take it not at all this one's harder for me to show but yeah I mean I will say that I have had it that's a day in my life yours. girl that's a day in my life yeah that's uh, it's just the weirdest scar it really is it's like all kind of like knotted and tied I mean I was 13 and I shattered my arm in a million places so the uh, early 90s maybe oops a long time ago and I'm 41 well, and so it's an old old scar and those surgery procedures now have changed so much like even like breast augmentations it's like yeah, okay we're sure. talking about apples and oranges now but we see those scars all the time. And like one looks a little bit like it's a hypertrophic scar. The other one looks not too shabby, but even yeah. having those like sort of those train tracks along the scar. I mean, that is virtually Im impossible to see once you've had the paramedical tattooing I can't done on it. Wait. And I think like the other thing just to add, I know you'd mentioned that like back in the day, people were like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to use these colors. There was a really bad selection of colors that yep. made things actually go fairly sideways. I've made my share of mistakes because of that lack of technology. But the ink is so different now and the training is so different. There's people like me with a lot of experience and I've made a lot of mistakes that I can basically shortcut this. Shorten. For you. Right. So, you can shorten the, 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 
the margin of error for, for others. Yeah. I think that when I first heard this was a thing, I was like, okay. It was like, you know, it was like when I started working on melanin rich lips, I didn't know. I mean, I had heard like, don't do that. Right. Yeah. Don't tattoo cool color, you know, cool colored lips. Like don't do it. That was what I was taught years ago. And then I started having friends who really wanted it done. And I was like, okay, I can think my way into this. And I think that that's what it took. It took industry pioneers like yourself who really had not only the experience, but the mistakes and yeah. had the, the ability to change kind of the way it's being done in the industry. And it's, it's so great. I, I had a, I have a couple of people who are in here asking questions like about a year ago, like, what do you think about paramedical tattooing and, you know, under eye circles and stretch mark camouflage and, you know, working on scars and things like that. And I was like, listen, I don't know much about it, but I know who does. <laughs> well, I think the beautiful part about learning is you don't need to make those same errors. <clears throat> you don't have to go through the trial and error phase of stuff. You can really laser focus that education so that you can start implementing it in your business right away. And I mean, if you think about our clients, they're mostly female, right? We do, right. we do brows, we do eyes, we do lips, and it's crazy competitive. Um, it's like that in my city. I'm probably sure. Oh, it's like crazy. Yeah. New York, yeah. Miami. There, like you said, there's a brow bar on every corner. You can, you know, it's there. It's very, it's saturated where you can bring something like this in and never tattoo a brow again. Truly. You just took the words right out of my mouth. I was like, saturated is not even the right word to describe it. Like, I, I don't even have the word to describe. Even when people are, you know, talking about it and they're excited, I'm just like, oh, there is a lot of that out there. But there's a completely other side of it that is untouched and so greatly needed. So, okay, 50% of our population is females and or roughly 50% of the population <laughs> is females. And then, so you think about, well, what about the other 50% of the population? It's like, um, okay, hello, paramedical. Basically, all genders need this service. This is an exclusive yeah. to females. And who doesn't have a scar? So that means that every single person is a potential client. And yeah, you just opened up your you opened up your client pool by fifty percent minimally. Exactly. And, and it mean, also has no age. No. I mean, well, obviously you need to be 18 to be tattooed, but you can, you know, you have, you know, you get that older clientele too, where, you know, those facelifts are more prevalent or, you know, accident and injury can happen to anybody at any point in any time. Exactly. So. Yeah, totally. And I think, you know, most of us know someone who's had cancer for sure. And then, or you're like me and you've had cancer, um, where, Okay, so paramedical services. All right, let me get, let me get the list going here. Okay, we've got areolas, um, yeah. scars, burns, cleft lips, uh, acne scars, vitiligo, alop like it's a long list compared to brows, eyes, lips. So yeah. you know the alternatives for people who want paramedical tattooing are expensive lasers, injections. Or more surgical Painful ones. Yeah. yeah. Or, or sometimes nothing. Like a lot of times when people show up to see me, they like, this is the last stop for them. This is the end of the road. Um, I'm potentially their last hope. So, you know, as far You're like as the Hail Mary, <laughs> Hail Mary. Um, but, and, and the thing is, is like people spend so much time, money and energy on a lot of those other alternatives and they don't work. And, not you know it's it's sad because i think this is such an amazing affordable option for people to do but it's this it's is just not known about it it's yet. not known about it and a lot of these people are putting makeup on a scar or a burn every day when you know we can, it's just like putting brows or eyeliner it's like you're doing that every day it's like groundhog right. day 
rinse and repeat. Um, except it's doing that from like that camouflage paramedical paramedical yeah. side. Mm -hmm. So what are the what are the downsides? I mean, listen, there's there's all of these positives known to man, but like, yeah. what are the like somebody comes and has their their scars repaired or their cam or their stretch marks camouflaged or their burn scars camouflaged or you're working with somebody who's got like vitiligo and you know they are now you know more of a uniform facial color like what are these clients looking at as far as like they can't in their life and the maintenance that they may or may not need you know going forward because mm -hmm. you know that's 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 one of the things that like I would love to know like when I yeah. try and like bring on a new service like yeah no what's I, the downside I totally get that um I would say the downside is once you have a camouflage done you likely don't ever want to hit it with a laser right um and you need to keep in mind too that just sidebar, these clients are not seeking perfection. They're seeking improvement. Right. So when it comes to the downside and you say, hey, don't ever laser this before, they're like, yeah, no problem. Um, there, for some people, there may be some touch ups required in time because not, we like to use ink so that it is right. staying in there like a body tattoo. We're not doing anything that we would use on the face. Um, but, some scars will reject color over time and some hold it for forever. So I right. guess one of the downsides, or I don't even know that it's a downside, but it, no, I, it, I hated to use that word. I was trying to find something different. Like one of the, not the contraindication, but like the maintenance protocol, I guess. Yeah. And so I think maintenance wise, you may or may not need something. And sometimes I can't even predict that. It's just something like, Hey, in five years, if this is losing its love and feeling, call me, you know, well, we'll touch <laughs> exactly. it up. Exactly. Um, but I think the biggest thing for people is regaining that confidence. Uh, yeah. It, and like you said, they're looking for improvement, not perfection. And mm -hmm. the, the, the lip scar you did the other day, I was like, so cool. Right. Wow. And that is, and I can tell you just from my experience from using like lip blushing techniques to deal with that when it enters the lip and like recreating yeah. it, that is not an easy area on the body to actually physically implant pigment. It has yeah. its own little tricks. Just this, the skin here is really funky. Yeah. But wow. I well, mean, a talk cool about story. life changing. Yeah. A cool story about her. I, people always tell your story, like always. And yep. even with like cosmetic stuff, where they're always like, t I hear the, the craziest stories, right? But in paramedical, I would say like 99.9%. Oh my God, your dog is so cute. <laughs> moose. Is yeah. that a Weimariner? It is a Weimariner. And he was, he was born a little soft in the brain. His birthday was yesterday. So he's just like the biggest cuddle bug on the planet. <laughs> But oh he God, fights with his older brother really bad. So when I can bring him in and give him some extra love, he comes and hangs out with me in here. Oh my and, God. But so yeah, he's funny. literally laying on top of me right now. <laughs> I'm such a dog person. I'm happy he's here. <laughs> he loves you. Right? You love Jody? Yeah. Good boy. Um, yeah. So the back to the girl with the lip scar. So she, I was telling you how everybody always tells me their stories, right? Right. Um, and she never told me her story because she said it was too traumatic. And um, I thought, you know, what this poor girl has been through to not share that because people tell me some pretty dark and scary things that have happened to them. And, you know, what has related it to, from that scar or experience or whatever. And um, yeah, she just said, it's like, I think it's completely changed her as a person. Um, amazing and it's yeah I mean who can say that about their work every day like I just I can't speak highly enough about adding those services um, one of the things I do find is a challenge for PMUs is getting their head wrapped around using magnum configuration needles yes. more more larger ones because sometimes I feel like some people have dipped their toe with like Hey, I've used a five or a seven, but I'm talking like 13s, 13, 15s, 15, 15, yeah, curved, you know, all sorts of, if you know what, I think the, one of the, the hangups for PME artists is that we're always 90. Yeah. And to learn hand control at a 45 yeah. is a whole nother muscle that you need to develop. It's one of the 
the reasons that I kind of go back and forth with Steve over S and P versus PMU. And I'm like, I am not messing up my muscle memory. I am not doing this all day. And then I'm just going to try and do yeah. like, I'm not messing with my muscle memory. And when I work with areolas, I work on a 45 degree angle. So, cause I'm working with those larger configurations yeah. and those mags. And I think that that's where the trip up comes in. It does. But I also think sure. that that's part of what's kind of a little bit wrong with the permanent makeup industry too, mm -hmm. is that whole like, do as I do and don't ask the questions as to why, like don't, don't learn the why behind what you're doing. You're always yeah. going to have kind of trouble switching things up. And I think yeah. that this generation, me, you, like our generation of artists is starting to realize that in the, the newer generations that's, that are coming into the industry that we need to be better as teachers and as educators yeah. to give them the how and the why. So when they want to expand on their services, that words like, you know, machine stroke aren't scary or using yeah. larger configurations of needles aren't scary. We've stopped as educators saying things like, don't you dare use a, like, I, I know people who kill, kill it, kill it in the dark lip world with magnum configurations. Yeah. Kill it. Yeah. Do a great job. I, I just don't happen to be one of them. It's just not what I'm comfortable with, but it doesn't mean that it's wrong. And I think that we're starting to take a lot of that language out of our education and I'm really proud of the industry for that. I really uh, am. I agree. I think what has always <clears throat> clapped and I think it still does is like body tattooing and PMUs. They're just like oil and vinegar. Yeah. Um, but truthfully, body tattooers have honed mag skills for forever, right? Like yeah. that's their jam. That's their world. That is how you effectively, efficiently tattoo without damaging tissue. And so I realized that I have been trained by body tattoo artists and I've taken that knowledge and developed a how to use Magnum course for PMU. Beautiful. Because I'm sure like Carly, you and I are just talking about this right now. It's like, okay, I want to do all this stuff. But one of the main pain points is I don't know, or I'm not comfortable or confident using larger needle configurations, like mm -hmm. the Magnums that we yeah. talk about a lot. And it's not scary. It's like, if you circle back to when you first started and you're going to put a needle in someone's skin, like it's terrifying. And then you practice and you get the hang of it. And then you go, okay, it's like the muscle memory. You're like, I could do this in my sleep, right? I... It's the same thing with mag needles. When you're working with a machine and you already have that experience, adding that on is not tricky. Like no. people have that that scared, like blanked out look on. As a matter of fact, using a single needle configuration is not only more traumatic for the skin, but it's actually uh, more difficult because you're Thank not you. affecting skin resistance at all. You know, I always use the analogy. I tell people if you have an orange. And you want to, and you stab it with a single pin, it's going to go straight in and straight through with very little force and resistance. Yeah. You try and do that with a seven round shader or a 15 mag, you're only going to get so far. Those needles only spread. The skin resistance comes up into the needle spread and yeah. you have much less trauma to consider. But yeah. it's just, it's the way that permanent makeup was taught. It was taught that single needle configurations were more gentle somehow. And I, I, I still can't wrap my head around where that came from or why that was ever said, but it's definitely not more gentle. I agree. And I like, thank you for saying that. I am not a nano needle kind of gal. I never have been, but that's because I'm super old school. And <laughs> that, I don't even know that that existed or was even an op. Like, I don't know what they would have told me to do with a single needle back in the day when I was trained. Like there was zero purpose for it. And if you were to talk to a body tattooer, if you use a nano, I, I say nano needle, they're like, what? right. You mean this single needle configuration? Yeah. Or they're like, what do you, what do you use that for? Like they yeah. laugh. They're uh, like, that's the same a joke. Thing. When we have guest tattoo artists in the studio and they'll watch me tattoo a set of lips and like come over and be like, what are you using? And I'm like, I don't know, one round liner. They're like, for what? I'm like, I just did all of that with a one round liner. They were like, like, I've literally watched like the heads explode and yeah. I've had multiple conversations over and over and over again about like just it's just what I was taught and how I was learned and I think a lot of it came from just weird translation between yeah. foreign languages and English you know as far as like <laughs> the can'ts and the don'ts and the nevers yeah. like things like that because it's 
it's very less, it's much less traumatic to use a three round liner than it is to use a single. Well, and it's just like you said, it's like you get taught this and then you think it's like the letter of the law and you must always follow that. And I got, I think we all got caught up in that. And especially yeah. people who have done it for a long time, like we have, because there were not alternatives. No. So it was like, um, yeah, you use this and you don't use anything else. And then you're just terrified to ever try anything. Ever try. And, or like, you know, use a PMU machine versus a tattoo machine. I've been uh, tattooing with a tattoo machine since I started. Cause I, yeah. I got a permanent makeup machine and it was crazy expensive. It was a couple thousand dollars. Nouveau and contour. It, just, uh, it was in a nouveau contour, but it was something quite like it. And I rem it had like the acupuncture pin that you had to put in and the, and the cat, like you had to like build this whole thing. And I remember like just trying it on skin and being like, I'm never going to get anywhere with this. And yeah. I need like power. I need torque. And yeah. I went out and got a tattoo machine. I went down to the guy down the street and I was like, Tony, show me tattoo machines. He's like, I've got coils. They're loud and obnoxious and this and that. And I was like, I don't care. Teach me everything, you, everything, you know. Yeah. And I ended up buying a rotary. I bought um, a halo spectra and I was working needle on the bar. And it was hard to find a single needle on the bar at the time. So I was doing a lot of my work with a three round liner. Yeah. And I, I loved it. I was like, okay, I'm going to question every don't I ever heard because this don't is a do for me. This is great. This is working out beautiful. And I was getting all of the healed results that I was dreaming of getting that I was fighting with, with all of these more gentle machines. You know, right. we tried that whole semi-permanent makeup conversation which right. doesn't exist a tattoo yeah. is a tattoo is a tattoo it's not yeah. semi-permanent it, it's great it, it will it'll fade a little bit over time just because of the mm. thinness of the skin you know light fastness etc but it's still a tattoo it's you're putting pigment in the skin <laughs> yeah totally like there's a definition of that and that is it so yeah you know it's it's certainly not a gray area but you know, one of the things that I was really impressed by, because I was using smaller needle configurations, because that's just how I was taught. But then once I started wrapping my head around using mags, um, it was like, okay, I'm doing three times the amount of work that it took me in one time the amount of work. Like, it starts educating PMUs that you can get more done in a day, yeah. you can have more clients, and then you can make more money. And you're um, also not as fatigued. You're also not, you don't have to be so, I mean, you have to be hyper concentrated when you're using mags that all your needles are touching the surface at the same time, that you're at the right angles and things like that. I mean, I'm not saying that there is, but when you're using a single needle configuration, you have to monitor everything that you're doing at all times because you can so very easily disrupt your depth yeah. just by changing your stretch or your pressure because there's no there's no safety with the skin resistance. Yeah. Because it's just gonna go straight in and straight through. Now, don't get me wrong, I can turn out a, a lip procedure or an eyebrow or an eyeliner as quickly with a shader as I can with a single needle, but I've also trained myself to do that. Yeah. And I'm gonna take your mag course and I'm gonna hit some lips with it because it's do it's it. always kind of it's always kind of stopped me using the mag on lips because it just that angle for me is because of my surgery. So I will, I right. can't turn my hand any more than this on this okay. side. So, so I have to like do these really weird body things to make sure the rotation comes from the shoulder. I have no pronation in my, in my dominant hand. Gotcha. So I have to rotate like this whole thing. So when I work with that mag at that 45 degree angle, I get exhausted like in my neck and in my shoulder, but that's just, that's a me thing. That's got nothing to do with anybody else, but I'm, I'm totally going to take that class. But I wonder too, if it's like, there's a workaround for you because I feel when I think of, of when I work, you know, there's a couple different options of more of a wrist movement. I don't know how your wrist is, or yeah. there's like a movement that almost comes from your elbow. Elbow. That's the one that I shoulder. usually end up using. It's like basically yeah. from the, the elbow and keeping everything kind of like Moving stationary, I guess. Yeah. And like kind of stirring a pot. I guess. Exactly. Would be a way always... to describe it. That's what I do when I use it on areola. But with areola, I can resituate myself in a very different way. Yeah. And if you so have, a I have routine. funky chair positions and stuff because of it. But yeah, I'm I'm totally in. 
and cordless machines like game changer you can now like i can work around the body instead of like yeah. having this cord like tangled up um one of the really good analogies i like to use is you know if someone okay so i want to paint my wall and i'm like carla you're the best painter come over give me a quote on you know this paint job and you're like okay well i can use a skinny eyeliner brush to paint this room or i could use a big roller i mean <laughs> that is the comparison of mags to smaller configuration yep. needles and it's not that the like the little skinny brush doesn't have its spot because maybe i'm detailing some super intricate little part of the room but it's like using the proper needle configurations for the areas that you're working on it makes it easy and yeah, it makes it, it effective you're not traumatizing skin and i think one of the big things with pmus is like you have this skill set you need just a little bit more to learn to do those things like it, it seems foreign but you're really close to the end and the light yeah. is literally and, right you know there. i think that's another thing too about you know pmu artists paramedical tattoo any any type of tattoo artist if, like if you ever get to a point where you feel like you know everything check yourself because yeah. You're going to learn something new at every point. And if someone ever tells you, don't ever do this, ask why. And if yeah. they don't have the answer to that, um, don't just take it like that. Don't just, just be like, okay, well, they don't, you know, they, they should have an answer as to why. Like, I can tell you, don't use black, blue, and purple pigments when you're working on dark lip neutralization. And I can tell you, don't do that because you're going to make something darker with yeah. those three colors like there's yeah. a reason that that's in there yeah. and i can tell you the why i'm telling you not to yeah but if someone tells you don't use a, a multi-needle configuration when you're doing brows lips eyeliner paramedical tattooing areola tattooing and their answer for why is because i said so <laughs> like that's not enough of an answer that's not even an answer yeah you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself girl exactly or your client <laughs> or your client <laughs> Did we just age ourselves? Oh my God. God no, just we didn't. Right we did back it. to middle school. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I want to open it up, guys. I know that Jody and I could talk and wax rhapsodically all night long about the glory and the joy of all this. But if you guys have questions, please feel free to ask. Um, what machine do you girls use for eyebrows, eyeliner, lips? Um, I have a plethora of machines in here, and I'm sure Jody does too. Um, the, the machines are really personal, and not only are they personal to you, sometimes they're personal to my, my point during the day, and mm -hmm. every now and then, even the client. So um, I would say you want something high quality. That does not mean it's very expensive. Um, yeah. There's some quality machines out there for $100, some really good machines out there in that three to $500 range, the six to $1,000 range, um, but you want to make sure that you're using an actual tattoo machine. Um, that would be my, my suggestion. And I mean that because of the proper motor, the power, the torque. Um, you want to make sure that you're using something that takes universal cartridges. So you're not stuck with just, you know, one brand, as you guys all know, with COVID, we had a huge period of time where needles were really hard to get a hold of. So you want to make sure that you can that you understand not only the machine you're using, but the needle you're using. And to understand the needle, you're really looking into steel and you know the, the size and the gauge and things like that, the flexibility of that steel. Um, they're pretty much all manufactured in the same places. So, you know, where like, you know, for example, Quadrant is tattooed is the same factory that um, FYT is manufactured, it's the same factory that um, V Select is. Um, easy tat. So as long as you understand what you're using and you can read it effectively, you've got yourself something good. But I've got, let's see, I've got a mast in the studio. I've got a Valhalla in the studio. I've got the Bishop Phantom. I've got the wand. I've got the flux. I've got the Zion. I have a Bilar. I have lots of different types of machines here in the studio, but um, I go a lot for um, my Scorpion, I really do. I, I just happen to love the way that machine feels in my hand. It just happens to be one of the first ones I grab. What about you? What's your what's your go to? So I I'm all rotary always. I don't even know how to use a coil machine. They look absolutely intimidating and terrifying. <laughs> 
Um, but I, I used the Cheyenne Hawk for yeah. ever. And um, what I found was I just, for me, it was like, I want to be really good at a machine. So, or using and like understanding machines. So I used right. the Cheyenne and um, all my other artists use it as well. So like, we just kind of get stuck on using that machine. And then recently we bought the Omnias, which are wireless. Wireless, yeah. Oh my God, I freaking love it. Um, Hive Beauty has those guys, um, for those of you who are looking for them, uh, Hive Beauty, Omnia. Yeah, Amanda and I have been talking about that machine too. She keeps telling me I would love it. So it's super balanced. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> forget that part. It's wireless, like hello. I mean, I thought Amanda's like, you have to get it. Da, da, da. I'm sending you one. And I, I'm like, Amanda, I just feel like I don't want to be in a procedure. I tattoo all day. And if this thing dies, like that's problematic for me. She's right. like, no, it's got like seven hours of battery. And she was raving about it. So anyways, I tried it seriously in love. I mean, Good. a it's, it's balanced. So your hand doesn't get sore. Obviously, there's no cord, but it's just, it's easy to use. And I don't know, we've ditched all of our Cheyenne machines and now everyone uses that. We're just funny. Like all of us get onto one thing. Everybody gets on one bus. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've, I've used the Zion before. Um, it's funny though. You know how when you tattoo with something different, it's like, Maybe because I haven't used it in a whole procedure that I'm like, oh, I, I don't know. I, I don't like it. It's this. like, like tattooing with your left hand all of a sudden. Yeah. And I, like it, or it, your opposite hand, whatever that may be for you. Yeah. It it's weird. And I don't like it. And I feel like it rattles my confidence a bit. So I'm just like, ah, back to what you I You may know. love the Zion if you swapped out the cam. So oh, really? it comes it comes with a 1.8 and a 2.5 in the box. But based on what you're describing with the Omnia and the Cheyenne, you might like something with a little bit more of hit, like a hit, like it actually feels like it connects. Yeah. So you're going to need, you would probably love it if you swap that out for like the 4.2 millimeter stroke, you'd probably love it. So funny enough, we're talking about that. So um, someone was recommending that I don't have such a hard hitting machine, but it's kind of all I know. So now I'm almost thinking Maybe do I go back to the Zion that has like a little bit of that softer hit to it? You can um, also adjust that too on the Zion. It's mm -hmm. one of the only machines that you can pull that open and adjust. I think it has 12 or 16, don't quote me on it. It's different um, settings for adjusting the yeah. hit. But if you swap out the cam, you're going to get a longer stroke length. So you'll be able to hang your needle out further, which is glorious when you're using multiple needle configurations. Yep. You don't want that needle right up against your guard. Yeah, <clears throat> it'll put more power on it because think of a golf swing, right? So a short stroke is like more of a putt where yeah. a longer stroke machine is like, you know, you need to get that thing to the other green. Yeah. Right. So it's got more power behind it and you can adjust the gift, which is yeah. the spring that uh, makes it tighter or looser to make the impact feel a certain way versus another. So one of the things I love about the Zion, especially for new artists, is that it is a little bit customizable and you can play with the settings a little bit. So not only are you learning what really works for you, but you're also learning what other things feel like. So when you want to get multiple machines in your studio, or in, you know, you have kind of an idea of what really vibes with you yeah it really is a personal connection yeah machines are very personal <laughs> and I it's like you know you it's just like you said it's like you you get onto another machine and you do feel like suddenly you're tattooing with your left hand yeah for and, sure you know these are not procedures that you want someone to feel like you're tattooing with your left hand you know absolutely not and do not try out brand new spanking machines on human beings get out your <laughs> practice pad <laughs> get out your practice pad for sure uh let's see i know i saw some other questions come up and through uh any machine you guys you can use any machine on any type of machine on any type of procedure there's no machine there's no magic machine for eyebrows or magic machine for lips or magic machine for paramedical tattooing i think what jody and i are trying to to tell you guys is that there's a magic machine out there for you and it's what works the best for you and it's about understanding what you're looking for and trying not to get sucked into the the hype of like you know <clears throat> this is what i use you have to use it mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. understand maybe perhaps ask that instructor why they particularly like that machine what about it 
makes them feel successful with it. But for me, you know, I tattoo for the, for the healed result. I don't tattoo for the Instagram photo. I know Jody doesn't. My clients get swollen. <laughs> My yeah. clients, you know, get unevenly swollen. Yeah, they bleed. Like it that. looks ugly. It looks scary. <laughs> yeah, you tattoo scar tissue. Boy, that stuff gets scary quick. It, it gets ugly and angry looking really quick. I just posted sure. um, the self-harm scar that I, well, it was many self-harm scars on a woman's arm. Yeah, on the, the arm, right? Yeah, and so wow. she, had, she had cut herself with glass. So, like, we're not talking skinny scars. We're talking, like, a centimeter yeah um, they look thick and uh thick. i posted the after because i just want to show people how gnarly it is and it, it's a little terrifying for the client as well because you know yeah, it gets all like raised and angry yeah, i remember like, when we did my arm it was like it looked like it had been stung by bees yeah and you know that can be triggering um for a client too that uh that that could sort of like reinflame and look really scary. So I always sure. say to people, you know, anticipate this looking, you know, really red and swollen and and all of that because that is normal and that how is how everybody looks. But I think it's good to showcase those pictures um as much as some of them might scare people, but I, I think agree 100% with you. I mean, I when I post my photos, I mean, you guys can all scour my Instagram. I mean, yeah, okay, every once in a while I have that, like, creative collage. But yep. I don't touch my client's skin in any way. I mean, oh, listen, you got a long hair hanging off your chin. I'll do you a solid. But, like, <laughs> the swelling and the this and the that, like, I don't know when it became a thing in our industry that you needed to get everything done in one session. And you needed yeah. to do it in one session without any swelling, without any redness, without any, you know, just marks from like my finger pressure just being yeah. on their face. When did that become a thing? And yeah. why is it, how does that make you a better artist? At the end of the day, it's, it's the healed result that's important. And, you know, I think it just gives the wrong impressions to people. If you use these magic machines and use this magic pigment and use this magic needle, you won't have any of those things yeah. and you'll be done in one session. That's bananas. Yeah. I think even in my online academy, I think it probably scares people a little bit about what I show because <laughs> it is like, I love how raw you are. It's I like love real it. time. There's no filter and mm -hmm. you know, it's not always pretty. And no. sometimes it comes back and it's still not pretty. Like you have to understand even the people who have the most experience still work towards as close as we can get to perfection, but it's not in one session and it's not, and it's not when they first perfect. sit up. Yeah. Yeah. When totally. they first sit up, it's, it, it is. And, you know, you've got to give it that six to 10. When I work with melanin rich lips, it's at least 10 weeks. Yeah. You know, they can have post-inflammatory, you know, issues where, you know, the lips may go temporarily dark. Like, all of this stuff is, is part of the process. And we're not doing anybody any service by covering it all up with makeup. Yeah. And lighting and slapping it in a collage and then trying to market it that way. We're, yeah. We, I, you're not telling the truth about your work and you're not telling the truth to your, your, your current clients versus not even the ones that are potentially coming to you. So when they sit up swollen, they're, they're terrified yeah. because they've never seen anybody swollen or red on, yeah. on any of your work. Like that's, you're setting yourself up. Like, don't, I think, please. you know, one of the things about that is people feel like they're not going to get business because they showcase that. Cause so many people don't, but I feel it's the opposite of that. Like I do you have too. to be real and upfront. And where I really find I lay my cards on the table is with paramedical. Like, not only their expectations aren't one hundred percent improvement, but if I think I can only get you thirty percent improvement, I will tell you, and I will say right. it's this amount of money for that percentage of result. If you feel comfortable, I'm your girl. If you think that you know, if, if it's too expensive or the result is not good or your goal is perfection, like we will have a conversation about it and work through whether I'm the right person or the procedure is right for you, right. Um, which is probably different. I feel like I don't necessarily have those conversations very much in the cosmetic world because it's a different canvas. I can very easily predict, predict what's going to happen. And rarely do I see something come back that I was like, whoa, 
what happened there. But um, <laughs> those are the two different worlds, right? Of, yeah, of that client two. expectation thing is, is is real. You know, I get yeah. I get women who come in with you know lips this color and they want them you know this color, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, let's talk about your expectations yeah. <laughs> and what what this is actually capable of doing. Um, you know, whereas, you know, eyebrows and eyeliner is more of an aesthetic thing where, you know, neutralization, camouflage work, scar work, it's multiple sessions. Yep. It's about managing that expectation. Just like you said, if I have to tell somebody that, listen, yeah, all right, I get that this is where you want to go, but you're going to look somewhere in, you know, you need to look in that, you need to look a little bit in a different direction here. And this yeah. is what the techniques are capable of. And I may not be the right fit for you. And but even, it's okay to say that it's also you know it's okay as artists to to really be honest about the process your clients will love you for it yeah so one much of the, more one of the things i come across is um uh liposuction scars that have keloided so oh, from the now, drain maybe pardon me do they keloid a lot around the, i know they keloid a lot around like the drainage sites right Not the lipo the no, the injection, like where, oh. like if, uh, for example, like I had a girl come in, black skin has her body, like her back contoured, and she has like um, nine different in, wow. in, incision sites that have all keloided. And I can, she's coming in, like I, I can see it in her eyes. She's like, Jody is, has the magic wand is going to fix this. And I, I'm like, you know what? I, cannot touch this like there is I was just gonna nothing. say you can't even tattoo it no like I'm like there is nothing I can do I wouldn't even go as far to be as comfortable sometimes I'll get things that I'm like look we can give it a try here's the like I just did this actually on a keloid scar um last week I'm like she's desperate she has keloid scars on her back from cystic acne and I'm like they've been injected so they're flattened and they're not super dark so I said listen I will, I'm comfortable doing a test patch on you, but here is the risk. It's going to get worse. We might have nothing happen to this, or it might improve. It might even look amazing. But if you are willing to take those chances, I will do a test spot on this keloid scar. And would I recommend that for beginners? No, 100% not. 100% no. Yeah, absolutely. You also, you also need to know your skill level and, you know, where you might, you know, you start to grow. And I have a lot of years of experience and I almost always say no to stuff that's fairly unpredictable like that. So like the girl who came in right. with the liposuction scars, I just was like, I'm sorry, no. I mean, she asked me 10 different ways to do this procedure for her. And it's, it's so disappointing for them to hear no, because as I mentioned, sometimes I'm the last stop or the last yeah. bit of hope. And, you know, you tell them, no, I mean, she just left like with her tail between her legs and so, no. you know, sad. It's so hard to say no, but you know what? It's one of the most valuable things that I've ever learned how to do for myself in my career yeah. is to not, no, maybe because I'm, I'm not comfortable. Yeah. No, because you're not a candidate. No, because you and I don't see eye to eye as far as what results, you know, I can achieve for you. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I had somebody, you know, say to me over and over again, well, I want this color. And it was like, uh, it was like a really white, like nude. And I was like, that's just, I, I can't make that happen. Like, yeah. like, we just kept missing it. Okay, so I'm going to get this white nude. Yeah. No, like, no, yeah, no. Okay, you know what? <laughs> this isn't going to work. You and I are not simpatico here. So yeah. it's, it's okay to say that. And I think that no matter what you're and who you are in the industry, just know that you're, you're allowed to, to know your comfort level and your skill level and to seek out education often. Yeah. And all the time, you never know what you're going to learn. Jody's classes happen to be the next ones on my list. Um, I just, I have not had the chance to sit down and actually learn something <laughs> <laughs> new, <laughs> but they are the next classes on my list for sure. Oh, uh, thanks, Carla. You're so welcome. I can't wait. I mean, Shay has been telling me how amazing you are for the better part of two years, and I agree with her wholeheartedly. And 
I watch your work all the time come through my feed. I'm like, oh my God, it's so incredible. So if you guys are interested in learning paramedical tattooing, I so recommend Jody's courses. I know I have not taken them myself, but I know many who have, mm -hmm. who have done so on the behest of my recommendations and have been absolutely in awe by their own results. So it's one thing to be able to do, it's another thing to be able to teach what you do and have that translate into someone else's hands, especially over a computer. And uh, I know she does it extremely well because I've seen the work of her students and I have seen her work time and time again. And I am just, uh, thank God you exist. Aw, um, you are so <laughs> sweet, thank you. Does anybody have any last minute questions that they promised Jody I would keep her for an hour? She's a super busy girl. <laughs> so um, please feel free to ask. I'm just going to scroll through this one more time. If we did not get to it and you happen to be watching this live after the fact and you have questions for Jody, hey lady, please do an amazing solid and throw it in the comments or throw it up in the DMs and ask. Um, ask away because she is a wealth of information and knowledge. And as much as we could sit here for the next four hours and have a huge <laughs> conversation about all of this, um, I don't want to take up too much more of her time, but uh, anything else that we missed Jody that uh, we should hit before I, I, I say good night to you. Well, I just lastly, I want to add that um, I feel like paramedical tattooing reminds me of when I got into cosmetic tattooing in like, 2009 and there was no competition and I'm excited for people to get to experience that because most people don't they're like jumping yeah, in it's and it's true it's so saturated so you're not taking away from your cosmetic paramedic or your cosmetic business you're just adding extra services yeah. on and um, if it speaks to you I'd love to um, offer a discount code for tuning in on this live oh my god that would be amazing yes yes please please okay so Jody 15 J-O-D-Y 1-5 will get you 15% off anything on my academy so for those of you guys who don't know uh, she does online and in-person training um, but I believe that she's talking right here about the online course so it's Jody. 15. Yes. Yes. We'll get you 15% off of any of Jody's online training courses. Jody, will you tell them what the website is for them to, to go and get a hold of that? And I will make sure everything is in the comments too. Absolutely. Okay. First off, sorry, I had a different promo code made up for our live. It's actually sculpted studios. Oh, fun. 10. Yeah. So sculpted, sculpted studio studios, 10. 10. Yes. Yeah, so it's specific for this one. And Yay! sorry, what was the other question? What's the website URL? Oh, yes. It's www.jodystoski.com. Got it. You heard it, guys. So Sculpted Studios 10, that will get you your discount at checkout for any of Jody's online courses at jodystoski.com. And I will make sure all of this is in the comments. Please give her some love. Send her your love and support. Make sure you follow her. Check out all her work. You will not be disappointed. How much experience do you need to have under your belt to do paramedical tattooing, Jody? I say a minimum of a year. But you know when you ask those questions, like if you've tattooed 3,000 people in a year or a crazy amount of people in six months, maybe you're ready. But if you've tattooed 10 people in a year, this is probably not for you just yet. So having some decent machine skills is a great place to start. And I think that goes where any online courses that you may take, um, they really aren't geared towards, you know, just starting you from absolute nothing. I mean, online classes are a great way to find out inexpensively if it's something that speaks to you without having to spend lots of money to, to kind of get there. But, you know, uh, if you are going, if you are a PMU artist or you're looking into paramedical tattooing and you want to add this as a skill, that's where those machine skills really do come in handy. You want to make sure that you put your body in a fundamentals class, an in-person class, um, and really get that hands-on experience and that training. It will make the world of difference yeah. in your frustration level trying to learn this. Um, mm -hmm. I speak from experience yeah. on that. My very first couple of classes were all online while I was watching my daughter grow in an incubator. So, uh -huh. um, yeah, it's speaking of, that's another scar we can talk about when she's older. Oh, boy, they cut her in half, too. They gave uh -huh. her an ostomy bag when she was three weeks old. Oh and um, she has a scar across her abdomen like this. 
Are you using, did you use silicone on it? I did use silicone okay. on it, but she wore the ostomy bag until she was about um, almost two. And okay. um, it's interesting because the darn thing started yay big. And it has just, she's five now and it is like this. And she has no belly button because your belly button is your umbilical cord. Right. And she was born at 23 weeks. So it was about the width of a piece of one, my, one of like strand of my hair. And it's grown but, as she's grown? No, it's like a skin tag. Oh. Or okay. belly button. There yeah. isn't one. And no, but I mean the scar. Has, oh, yeah, it's huge. Now it wow. goes across her whole body. And I'll send you a photo. Of it. It's really interesting because yeah. it, it's, it's stitched on one side. And then where the stoma was sticking out, there's this, there's this almost like hole. It's really interesting. I'll have to show it to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you pictures when... Uh, when she wakes up tomorrow, I'll get you a couple of, I mean, we can't do anything about it now. She's five, but yeah. <laughs> I had, I know darn well that that is going to be a 16 year old conversation for sure. Oh my so. God. Totally. Right. Um, well, let me just see. I just think there's a couple. Hey, Shay, we Hi. love you. Um, what if I've only been doing SMP? So SMP is just a totally different hand mo motion, but if you're really comfortable with Working with skin, I think is kind of where we're getting at as yeah. far as, you know, your comfort level when it comes to learning online. Um, Just yeah. to add to that too, Carla, um, with people who know SMP and you have that feel for a machine, I would probably say like that additional mag course is yeah. going to make you realize if you're comfortable with it or not, or you need to continue to expand. But you can you can get so far with practice skins and mag needles. It's once yeah. you start getting those fundamentals that you already have with the machine, like transferring it over is um, a lot simpler. Yeah, than people there's might. another really awesome tool for that too. Um, Procreate, which is on your iPads, um, they have um, a great little needle kit. Um, it's put out by Tattoo Smart, mm -hmm. and it's a great way to practice when you can't practice on practice skins. So oh, but they cool. have really cool configurations like you can literally get the Cheyenne needle kit and the you know things like that it, it's really interesting and a lot of a lot of tattoo artists use it because it does help with that mag configuration and if you don't have your apple pencil at the right angle it doesn't pigment on the oh iPads. my god That's yeah amazing. it's really neat to to kind of play with those different needle configurations but so to reiterate for Jody guys it's sculpted studios 10 at checkout that will get you a discount on her online courses. And as she's telling you guys, and she said it a few times, make sure you also get the learn your, your, the mag course as well, right? The additional mag courses that have a title. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, um, how to, how, how PMUs are going to learn to use mags, but I've got a wait list for it right now and it's launching in like two weeks. So, Oh my God. I'm, I'm on the wait list. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Hey, Claire. All right, guys, I'm going to let Jody go and say good night. It was amazing. Um, so, Violet, just to answer your last question, where can you find that MAG course? The MAG course, as Jody said, is on a wait list right now. It will be releasing in a few weeks. So hurry your little butt over to the website and get on that wait list. You don't want to miss it. Um, I use a 1RL for brows unless I'm having trouble implanting pigment into the skin. Then I use a 3RL. Should I be using a 3RL at that time? You can use a 3RL at any point you want. You may be having difficulty in planting pigment in the skin, not because of the needle configuration you're using, but it could be your angle of entry, it could be your stretch, it could be um, the hang on your, your needle. There's a lot of different things that that could possibly be ethereal link. So if you want to go ahead and DM me, you can feel free to do that and I might be able to help you troubleshoot. Um, okay, thank you so much, Jody. You are amazing, you are gorgeous, you are talented. and. The industry is so blessed to have you. Thank you so much for spending your evening with me. I oh, really well, appreciate you. Thank you. And I feel the same about you, Carla. Thank you so oh, much for having me. Have a great night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks.